Hello and how are you? My name is Rohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our third lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. Uh, yesterday we stopped at the level where we were able to uh, set up all the needs that we need to get started with our project. We were even able to authenticate users whereby someone could be able to log in and also log out. So in today's lecture, we are going to take it from how we stopped that in the previous uh, lecture. And uh, if you still remember, yesterday we stopped at the level where we needed to create the company. Since we said that our system need have to support multiple companies. So we are going to start at the level of creating a company, assigning the company owner, being able to allow the company owner to log in and also proceed with adding products and the rest. So that's what you're going to do today. As you know, we always do 60 minutes per lecture. So I will start our timer so we can go straight into our today's business. All right. So, so as you can see, um, this is my Visual Studio code. Okay. This is my Visual Studio code. And uh, I have already opened the project and added it there in the pro in the what in Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to open. Uh, I'm going to start the project. Okay, I'm going to start running. I'm going to run it. So to run it, I'll open my terminal and go ahead and run PHP artisan serve. Okay, and then to start on this uh, what on this uh, on this <laughs> IP. So if I click on this server IP, it will be able to take me to the current what? To the current it's, it's full screen. Uh, to the current what? To the to, to the project itself. So if you still remember yesterday, we were able to log in. That's why you see that I'm even already logged in. Okay, so I can as well log out. Okay, if you still remember, I can as well log out. Okay, so this is our system. Now let me go ahead and log in as administrator so it is admin and the password is admin okay so that's it so yesterday if you still remember in the previous lecture we were able let me call up this we were able to create our first model with this respective migration and that is the company model so what we are going to do was to add this company model in inside this uh, menu so the administrator should be able to add companies and also assign their respective users okay so let's go ahead and add the um, what the company model on uh, uh, the company model controller or the company control the, the company controller on this menu so to add the company controller on this menu the first thing that you have to do is to create the controller itself okay so to create the controller itself, there is a terminal, I mean, there's a command that we have to run. If you still remember in the previous lecture, we are going to run it and, and we are facing some challenges. And this is uh, PHP artisan admin make, and then you say company and then controller in capital letters, like the one I'm doing, beginning with the capital letter and then the last letters are in small letters. Every English word begins the word with a capital letter. That's what we call the camel case. And then you refresh the, the what the, the company con the, the the model. So I was facing a challenge. Let me see. I have here some okay. I have to uh on Mac you have to add these ones. I have to specify the model. I just forget to specify the model, okay? So I have to put up then model like that. So if you're using Windows, you may need just to use one slash, but for Mac we use double slashes, okay. So you specify where your model is so it is under model and then you say up then models then company so this command is going to create for us a controller so this controller it is where we shall be managing our what we shall be managing our our well it's where we, this controller is the one that we shall be using to manage our what our companies or companies that have registered with us 
So what you're going to do, you're going to run this terminal, this command. So I'll copy this command and then I open the what the terminal. So this first terminal is already used, is already occupied for the server. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open another terminal. So you press Ctrl Shift and then the tilde, or you can just simply come here and then say new terminal. So we shall have two terminals. One is acting as a server and the other one I'm going to use it for running the commands. So let me go ahead and run this command. I'll copy it and then paste it here and then press enter. So when I press enter, there is something that is going to happen in background. So they have created for me a controller. A controller is a file that is going to be used to control that particular model. So this controller can be found here under admin, under controllers. You see there's a new file that has been created, which is called company controller. So in this controller, it is where we're going to manage everything that you're going to do it, uh, to be using uh, to manage the company. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this route. So this route here, I'll copy it. Then after copying it, I'll select it and then I copy it. Then they say that I should add this route into this file of admin routes. You can press Ctrl and click on it, it will take you there directly. Or you can just simply come here to the app, to the app, and then you come to admin and then you'll find a, a file called routes. So in this route, it's where we're going to add this path of the what of the controller, so we can be able to access the controller. So I can collapse this one, and then I'll come to this uh, route, which is this one. Let me collapse it. How do I collapse it? Okay, just press Ctrl and T to collapse, and then I'll come and paste. I'll come and paste that route here. So this is the place where you have to paste your routes. So you can see the end point of our the end point of our company we are going to access them under companies you can see the name is here companies so i'm going to copy this word companies so if you want to access our mode of companies i'll just simply come to a project and then i come to a project and then i come here at the at our project a uh, link and then i put stroke companies okay stroke companies so when i press enter boom you'll see that I'll have a table that I'm going to use to control the companies. So if you still remember everything that, every variable or every attribute that we put in the other, in the, in the company table has been generated and be placed here. Okay, so this is going to be a table and you can as well be able to add new uh, items here. Okay, so that is uh, really powerful. Like we do not even create our own HTML. So our task is going to be just uh, modifying and uh, and see and, and adding a few logic of uh, how these things should work. So we are not even worried about what about writing our own HTML, which is kind of problematic and tiresome to write our own JavaScript and the rest okay so this is uh, very beautiful so if you want to learn details uh you have to find the link in the description of this video where there is a topic called laravel admin so when you go to that laravel admin playlist you can even find it on my youtube channel just come to my youtube channel and then search for learn it with mohindo come to my youtube channel search learn it with mohindo come to my to my what to my uh, channel here click on playlist and then come and watch this uh, this tutorial what is it let me show it to you uh, this one here this one here laravel admin full dashboard tutorial this one so there are 17 videos when you watch these 17 videos you will understand everything uh, that is happening about laravel admin it is a very powerful technique that will help you to do your uh, things with simplicity I really recommend you, if it is your first time, to come and watch uh, this tutorial uh, playlist. It will help you to give you enough grounds about Laravel Admin. Okay, so let us proceed. Now, you can see now we have a controller or a file that, I mean a page where we're going to manage the companies that are going to be working in our system. So, what you're going to do right now, we want to put this company on the menu here, okay? We want to put the company on the menu. So to do that, we'll just simply come and copy the endpoint name, which is called companies. And then you're going to come here under admin, under menu. So you'll find their menus, okay? So after doing that, uh, we are going to add a menu of companies here. So we'll just simply come here and put companies. So 
I'll just write here company. That's going to be the title. And then I put here, I click here to set the what? The, the, the logo. So I can come and say here, maybe building. Okay. And then I put here, after setting the logo or the icon, sorry, I'll come here and put near the, the URL, okay, the, or the endpoint, which is companies. So not everyone is going to access the companies. I can choose a sp specific people who should be accessing the companies, okay, or specific user roles. So since it is us who will be setting the companies, so you remember we created the user role. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to say that only uh, administrators should be able to do what? To access these companies because we shouldn't allow uh, any person to do what? To manage the company. Otherwise, if you ever manage the company, then what does it mean? It means that, uh, <laughs> it, mean that it will be pointless, okay? That everyone will be able to access it. So I'll go ahead and select here the role. And I say only someone who is having the administrator role is the one who should be able to do what? To access the companies. And then here, permissions, we can look at this one later. Okay? So this is the, the thing that we need. So it means that only someone who has the role of administrator, so you remember this administrator is a, a super admin, or us who can be able to control the system, is the one who will be able to access this link of companies. I'll go ahead and submit. So when you submit and I refresh, now you'll see that uh, we are able to see the companies here. So that is very beautiful. Like we don't even need to hustle with the menu to add the companies here. So let me collapse this one. I'm going to move. You see, I can as well even move this one here and then my menu will be arranged without even paying, without anything. You see, our, when I refresh here, our companies have come here. That is so beautiful. That is so nice. Okay. So after doing that, now the next thing that we're going to do, now we're going to see how we can register our companies. By the way, let me first um, uh, open our diagram, our ERD, uh, so that we can follow along without uh, getting lost. This is our design that we made in the previous lecture. So we finished this user, we finished user role, now we are here, company. Since everything will depend on a company, so we're on this level right now. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, work with companies, okay? And then work with, I mean, let's go ahead and uh, and uh, set these companies, okay? And, and manage and, and organize this table properly and also organize the, the form of creating a company properly. All right, so I'm going to click on new. So this new is the place where I'll be adding a new what? A new company, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and modify this form and make it look much more decent, okay? So what we're going to do right now, we are going to uh, to what to, to 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 change this name first from the word company to companies, okay? So I'll go ahead and come to our system here, and then come to company controller. Remember, this is the company controller that was generated. So this company controller has three main segments, okay? So the first segment is the grid. So the grid is the table. Okay, so if you want to manage or change something in the table, we shall be changing the grid information. Another segment is called the, the detail. This detail is a segment that will be showing the detail screen. And then the last segment is the form. So this form, it is where we'll be using to manage uh, things that uh, we want to appear in the form. So I'm going to change this word, the title from that company to companies. So when I come here and just change to companies and I save, I come to my project and I refresh. By the way, you can even refresh from here. You'll see it has now changed to what? To companies. That is beautiful. All right. Now, we want each company to have an owner. Okay. So each company will have an owner. But you still remember our first rule was um, only... Uh, only... <laughs> okay. 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 Our first rule was um, only person who has the company owner um, role is the one who can be what? Who can be a company owner, something like that. That was the rule that we had. So what does it mean? It means that uh, here we're going to reference the users and these users must be having a what? A uh, company owner. So... All right, let's, let's, let, me, let me explain this, okay? So I mean that if you don't have a, a role of a company owner, okay? If you don't have a role of company owner, it means that you'll not be able to do what? 
uh, it, it means that you will not be able to be what to be a company administrator. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to show you something in the tables. So here, elevator truck. So we have um, we have a table called admin user role. Okay, admin uh, admin um, role users. So this is a table that maps. This is a table that maps an administrator with a what? With um, this is a table that maps a user with their respective role so when we assign someone a role this table will be created it will have it will have a role id or the role that has been assigned to that person and then their respective what their respective user id okay so it is a table that maps the role and the user so what we're going to do we are going to get uh, a role i mean we're going to get uh, records of this table where someone has a role of a what a role of a company owner and then after doing that we shall get now those users who have those roles and then those users is they are the one that we shall put here in this drop down okay they are the one that we shall put in this drop down so those are the ones that we're going to put in this drop down uh dorian should mute your microphone uh so let us go ahead and see how we can set these records in this admin user roles. So to do that, we are going to come here to companies. As I told you that we in this form section, it is where we manage things from. So if I come here and I just simply say die and I say maybe test. Okay, so it means that when I'm in this page of forms, okay, when I'm this page of forms, it will stop from here. Okay. So in Laravel, if you want to get data in the table, so let me use here Copilot. Uh, so if you want to get data in the table, you just simply write uh, DB and then you say table, then you put the what? The, the roles. I can say maybe, okay. So, I'm going to get all the users in this role. So if this one is going to be, is not imported, I can just simply put DB and I import it. Just drag it and then write B and then you'll see it there and then press enter, it will be imported. So you see, this is where I died and this is where I am right now. So in this, in simple term, this, this, this command or this SQL, it is going to get for us all the users. I mean, all, all, all the what? All the um, the the role I mean the users in the, all the all the records that are in this table of what of admin users or admin role users okay so why are we doing this we are going we are doing this just because you need to get only the company owners okay so I'll go ahead and do DD so this one will dump and die these roles I just want to show you how, what we have manage to fetch from the other side so if i do like this and i save i come and refresh you'll see that we have managed to fetch one record okay which is role id one and then a uh, user id one this is the record that is in here okay so uh now i can as well uh, pass no condition by just putting an empty array like this like this this one is an empty array okay so if i come and refresh still it will get for me without a condition all right so let me let me let me first go back and uh, we create now here you can see that we have no any user role which does we don't have any other user that no, which does not have a, a company owner role so what we're going to do we are going to create uh, we're going to begin by creating a user and then we give them a role of admin of company admin so after doing that that is when we shall be able to do what to create the company and assign it to it the administrator you understand okay so let us do that so before we come here to create a company let us first go back and create a user so I'll first delete this okay so we're going to come here and create a user here okay we're going to create a user here so i'll come here and I create new user 
right new user so now this user when you're creating a user they must have a i mean they, they can have a photo okay so but you can see we are getting here an error they say that we have not configured our disk so we are going to configure the disk so the laravel admin should be able to store images okay so to configure the disk we go to configuration stroke file systems that is where we shall put a folder where we want the images to be stored so i'll come here and they said i should go to configuration stroke admin systems so i'll come here to configuration folder and then i come here to uh, file system which is this one okay this one okay file system so we have to pick a file system that we are going to use for a laravel admin so you are going to use this local one or you can even create a new one for for what for laravel admin by just duplicating this and then maybe you say here it's called admin something like that but if you want to use just a common one which is there the default one you can just simply copy this one local here so it means that laravel admin we're going to set it to be using this one to be using this uh, storage which will have the drive of local and then uh, it will be keeping our data in this storage path stroke application okay so let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here uh, now to the admin okay this is the file admin so come here to admin and then we come to where there is file go ahead and search here file okay so this file okay so here they ask you the disk that you want to use the disk that you want to use for what for storing uh, the, 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 the admin data so if you want to use a so these are the disks these ones here these are the disks eh? So if you want to use this local one, I can just simply come back and just say, instead of using this one, you should use local. But if you want to use a special one for admin, you can also copy this word admin, and then come back here and just duplicate this local one, and change this word to what? To admin. So both of them will work. So it means that Laravel admin will just use that one to, uh, to, to this one to store its local information. So uh, in simple terms, admin is going to use this admin, the one that we've just created here, this disk. Okay, and then the directories or the directory that we're going to use, so the image file will be kept in a special folder called images, and other file will be kept in a special folder called what? Called files. Okay, so that's how it's going to organize our things. So things like PDF and what will be stored in files, and things like pictures, PNG, JPG, they'll be stored in images. So after doing that, now we can come here and refresh. Now you'll see there will be no more error. So meaning that now we can be able to upload the pictures in our what in our system. All right. So now what we're going to do, we are going to create a new user and give him what and give them um, and give them. <laughs> we're going to create a new user and give them uh, and and create for them a company and add them to a company. All right, so another thing that uh, another thing that we are going to do is that um, uh, there is kind of a, what you call a what you call what what you call um, uh, a deadlock. A, a user will need a company, and a company will need a user. So which one comes first? <laughs> of course, a company that is supposed that is supposed to come first, but still also a company will need the what? An administrator so it is kind of really interesting anyway let's go ahead and first create a what and first create a user so what we're going to do right now we're going to create a, a company owner okay so these are the users they are the users that we have right now we have only the super admin now we're going to create a what a company owner so to create a company owner we shall come here to users and then create here new okay so we're going to create a company owner so i'm going to call this one company company admin one that is the username i don't know whether that i don't know whether that will not be confusing company admin one uh this is for our company one that we're going to use for testing and then the name of this one is going to be company admin and then we can even be able to say to select a photo if you want to you can be able to select a photo for this one then we set for them a password 4321 4321 and then we give them the role so the role of this person is going to be a company owner 
okay so this is like the person who is coming to buy from us the system okay so he's going to have a role of company owner so it is the person that we're going to give the what the logins and he's going to manage the uh, companies okay so you create for him an account first a user account if they're not creating a user account you're going to create for him a company and set him to be the administrator of that company so i'll go ahead and create uh, this user and then i give him the role of what of company owner i go ahead and submit so in submit uh you can see i've successfully created a user here and is having a role of company owner okay so you can create as many as possible so after doing that now we are going to go to the what to the company and now register this company admin as what as a company owner okay for for the sake of testing let us create another user here we can say maybe company admin two and then we say maybe our company i mean the name company admin two this is our second admin and their password for three to one for three to one and then role is also a company admin that is great too so we can be able to test things as we move now you can see now we have two company administrators so let us now go to companies and create a company and assign to them one of these administrators okay so i'll come here to companies okay so after going to companies you still remember when we click on create company you are going to come here uh to this form okay and this form we have just rated some things on top and we are dumping them here so if we come to our table now if we come to our table now to this table of admin roles so how thing how many how many columns are we going to expect here they're going to be three because i've created two use two more users and we have given them more roles so you can see we have a user a, a user who has id1 and has a role id1 this is our super admin and then this is going to be our what our second our first company admin this is going to be our third company admin so that is how the roles are being assigned in the background okay now after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we're going now to create a company so when you come here to company and now we click on new now you can see now we are having here three columns okay three columns you can see that now our system is going to be like kind of static or fixed so what we're going to do right now we need only the role of id2 okay or we need users who have id role 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 which has id2 because if you come here to 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 our what to our roles we have this company it has an id2 so you only need the company administrators those one which has id number two they are the one that we need okay so it means that we are going to put here a condition here in this table where is this where so we can put here where role role what role id equals to two so only those who have the role number two they're the one that we need okay so if we come now back to our companies and then you click on create now you can see we're having only two columns okay we are having only two records why because we have only two users who have uh the what who have the who have the role of id na, of of the role that has id2 or the role of company administrators all right so after doing that now we are going to fetch these users okay so they are the one which are able to become what to become company administrators okay so after doing that now what you're going to do we are going to go ahead we are going to go ahead and uh, uh, loop through these records or through these roles and fetch the users okay so i'm going to put here company i'm going to create another variable called company admins and make it to become a what to become an empty column okay i mean an empty array so this is how you make a an empty array i can collapse these things so you can see things clearly okay so this is how you make an empty array so i'm going to look through these roles as i'm getting those users as i'm adding them here okay so what you're going to do you're going to say for each okay so i'm looping through these roles these roles that you've got all the roles of administrators and then in each role i'm going to get a what a user 
So a company admin is going to be user equals to uh, admin. I mean, okay, user. <laughs> okay, there's a, okay, there's something interesting here. Now, if you want to access the users in Laravel admin, you can access them through administrator. Administrator. Okay. So this is how you access the users. Okay. But this one can become a little bit challenging because it is a, a vendor folder. I mean, it's a vendor file. I mean, it is this uh, this class is recorded in a vendor file. So we may need to use the user model that comes with Laravel. So we can be able to do what? Uh, to we can be able to access the users i mean we can be able to modify this user model other than using what admin administrator okay so what you're going to do we're going to go to the model of users and make it extend administrator so we'll come here and also change its table so you see here the table that we are using right now is no longer the table of users but we are using this table of what? Of admin users. This is the table that we are using, admin users. So we're going to make the model of users to be referencing or to be fetching data from what? From this admin users table. Okay. So to do that, we are going to go to the model of users, which is going to be here. Model of users, which is going to be here under app, under, uh, under models, under user. This is a model of users. So I'm going to change its table. So by default, this one is fetching data from this table, from this table of users, the one that comes with Laravel itself. So I'm going to change its table. I'm going to change its table. So to change its table and make uh, your own table, you'll have to do what? You'll have to, you'll have to go ahead and say protected. I can say maybe. So you have to go ahead and say protected. You say protected table, and then you put the table that you want this model to be fetching data from. Those who have learned Laravel, those who watch my videos of Laravel, you must be understanding this. So this one, it means that the user model, this user model, it is going to be fetching data from the admin what? From the admin users table. So you can also maybe extend it. You can remove this one and make it extend administrators. So it can have all the function of administrators. So do it like that. So make sure that it is importing these administrators. So if you you, you should have an a, a plugin called PHP Interface. Okay, you can <laughs> PHP Interface. Let me show it to you. It helps you to extension not a plugin an extension so come here to extension and search for php interface so this php interface this one eh interface this one it helps you to import things of php it helps you a lot my uh doing a shortcut to move from one life from one from one class to another so it is very good so make sure that it is installed in your what installed in your in your visual studio code this php interface please install it all right so where are we so we are here we have made this user model to extend administrators okay of laravel admin this one and also we have make this user table to get the data from what from the admin users okay so after doing those two things now what you're going to do now we're going to fetch the users who are having those roles that we are, we are fetched. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the what the company controller, this one here. So I'm going to loop through the roles that you have got that have loop through these roles that you have got that have the role ID of two or the role ID of company owner. And then each loop I'm going to get the user, okay, which is saying user find and then I say value and then say user ID. You know this user ID is part of this one. So I can check if if the user was not found. Let's see if the user is null. If the user is what? Is null. It should do what? It should continue. Okay. If user is null, it should continue. So if it is not null, I'm going to go ahead and say company admins. Company admins 
and then I get the user ID okay the user ID of this particular user which is going to be user and then I put ID equals to and then I get the admin user I mean the user with the name so this is going to be the value that will be shown that will be shown in the what in the drop down and this is going to be the ID that we shall be used writing in the database when someone selects that one. So by doing like this, we shall be able to get the company administrator. Let us first dump these ones and see if they are really there. So I'll just simply do DD and say company admins. So if I come and refresh here, everything is beautiful. You see, we are having the ID, user number ID2, we, and the name is here. And then the ID number 3, and the name is here. So these are the administrators of the company. So it means that if you remove the role from one of these guys, it means that he will no longer be what? A company administrator. That is so nice. So after doing that, now we are going to... Uh, so we have now this variable that have all our company administrators, this variable here. So if I come here and refresh, we are here now. You see, company owner, this is like uh, by default, you have to write a number but here i want it to become a what a drop down okay so to make it a drop down so i'll come here instead of instead of having this one as a number so i'm just going to copy this name and then and come here and so it is a function of laravel admin and say select instead of what instead of making it a drop down so you say you say select you say select let me write it copilot is helping me to, to complete these things but i'll be explaining you say form select and then you say company owner then you say owner this is what you, the user will be seeing and then you put here options then you point and say options and then in these options it's where you put now your array that is arranged in the form of id and a value the array of what the array of administrator and then i make i can make it required so to make it required, just simply say rules, rules, and then say required like this. So it means that someone must be able, must must select the company owner before they do what they they create a company. So if I come here and refresh, boom, you see, company owner. Let me change even this word to company owner. You see, if I come here and refresh, you see, company owner, and then you are having our company. Uh, admin one and then the company admin two this is beautiful and we know these are the only company owners that we have in our system okay so if you remove one role from the company owner then it means that it will not be able to do what to be shown there so if you want maybe to to to, to display the id in case you want maybe the id to be shown just in case to make sure that um that uh, that you're not making a mistake so you can just simply say company owner and then you concatenate the user id so you can be able to know okay this is the company owner x you see so you have this drop down you can even type in by searching okay so that is beautiful now let us go ahead and now finish the remaining parts of the form so you can see laravel admin has just make this become a little bit bigger okay become a little bit bigger in a way that um in a way that a company name is a text box but i want this one to be just to be i mean it's a text area i want it to be a text box not a text area okay so company name to change it from uh, from text box so we shall come here instead of having it as text box you're going to change this one instead of having it as text box area we're going to just wrap this one and make it a text box let us also make it required so you just simply make it required like this so we can put here maybe uh company company name like this so if we come and refresh here now it is no longer what it's no longer a text box it is a i mean it's no longer a text area it is now a text box where i can write a single line and another thing it is now required there is a star there now we can go ahead and make this one an email so the company email so uh, that it can be option so if you want to make it option you can just leave it and then maybe the company logo so this is going to be an image so you see how things are now going to be simple and beautiful you just simply write here image so this image it will make us to be able to upload the what the company logo you see without even 
too much hassle by just writing an image then you'll be able to have the logic of uploading the image etc so this one can be also a text area uh i mean text uh -huh. about us it can be a text area about the company it can be a text area and then here uh the license expiry it can it will be a what a date okay and then the address of the company it will be a what a text area and then the phone number of the company it will be a text area however there's also a field of what of phone number okay so uh, phone number two it also can be maybe a text area whoever i can go ahead and validate more if you want to i don't know they have also color here it would be a color picker the color of the company and then here a slogan could be a text area and facebook link can be a text and it can be text so by doing like this and save then you will see that we shall have our complete form which is there that is so beautiful without even too much hassle can you see that it is nice it is nice now after doing that it means that now we can be able to do what to create a company okay so you can install a plugin in your in your in your laptop uh, i mean sorry you can install a plugin in your google chrome or in your brave it is called fake filler fake filler eh? fake filler this one here go ahead and install it in your chrome it will help you to uh, generate the fake data when you're testing systems just go ahead and add it in your browser and then you'll find it here and then you you pin it like so i have it here so after pinning it uh you can now go ahead and start making fake data so if i refresh here i want to put here some fake data so to put fake data this is my fake field i just click on it tap you see it puts for me the fake data so i don't need to hustle with adding information no i don't need to hustle i just simply click here fake fill and then it adds for me the data so uh this urls there is another thing is called url and uh, is that url field okay this one here it can help you to do what to implement the url okay so i refresh here fake fake filler you see it gives me everything like it gives me the data so go ahead and add that fake filler so this is a url this is going to be a url and also the website 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 where is the website website is going to be a url all right that is beautiful so let's go ahead and refresh let's put here some fake data i just simply click here uh, fake filler it fills for me data so i can say maybe this is the company too so let me give the company name company one is it company one yes company one which has the administrator who has an id of two so this is company one okay and then that is the information what about us everything has been filled in by fake filler and i submit when i submit you see uh it has been saved successfully now when i come here to the list you'll see that uh, our company has been created without any hassle without writing the sql of inserting and all the rest our company has been created all right that is beautiful now before we come here before we come here there is one thing that i want to tell you or that i want to inform you now how shall we know when this user logs in okay let's say that okay where is where is our our table our table is here now when this company owner logs in how shall we know that he belongs to company x so it means that we have to add here the company i mean sorry when this user logged in how shall we know that he belongs to company x so it means that on this user table we must add also we must add also a company admin i mean a company id so that when a user logs in we are able to know in which company they belong to so once we know the company that, that they belong to we shall be able to know the records that we should show to that user so i mean that we're going to add another column to this what to this table of of what of users and we add company id so that when you are creating a company 
we assign this user or the admin of that user to become a default uh, to become to belong to that particular what but to that particular company so let's add some columns so these tables the one that came in laravel admin of course they're just basic tables they just have the name uh the the, the, the avatar uh, updated other they don't have like much more uh, information that we need to know the sex of the of the of the company the date of birth the what the i mean the sex of the person the gender of the person the date of birth the what all those they don't give them to you they are just basic okay but you're going to learn how we can add more columns on what on a, a table you can add them manually here but let me show you a right of adding columns in a table so you can just come to google here and search add columns to table level migration command i don't memorize these commands by my own self okay so this is the command okay the command is here this is the command i'm going to show it to you don't mind. okay so let's go to our important commands you still remember we created our file here our file here what is our mission right now? Our mission is to add a company ID on a user table. So you should be able to know in which company does a certain user belong to. So we are going to come here to our important commands. Our important commands are here. This file, which is where I put my important commands. So we are going to paste this command that I've just shown you. So it is called PHP artisan make migration. And then you put here the description of what you want to do. Okay. So this description should be unique from each migration that you're going to make. Okay. So I'm going to say add underscore. Don't put spaces. Add underscore more data to users table. Okay. So this explanation should be uh, very unique because if you make it the same, then it will override the other. Okay. So this is going to be our migration. Then the most important thing you specify the table to which you want to add those what to which you want to add those columns so the table that we're going to add those columns to is our table of admin users because it's the table that we are using for what for users administration admin underscore users so i'm going to come here and specify as admin users okay so once you run this it's going to create for us a migration and that migration it is where we're going to add more columns that we need on what on um, user on in on the table of users so i'll copy that i'll copy that and then i'm going to expand the terminal and then i clear the terminal after clearing the terminal i'm going to run the command i'll paste it there php adds and make uh colon migration add and main users make sure that there is no space there and it is unique then you you put dash dash and then you put table and then say equal to and then specify the table that you want to add columns to so that is how we shall be adding columns to other tables so when you press ok they are going to create for us a migration this is the migration that has been created just press control and click on it it will take you straight to the migration that has been created however you can as well find that migration and uh, database under migration you'll find it there in the bottom all right so that is our migration that has been created now it is going to here we're going to put the columns that we are going to do what that we're going to add to the to our admin users you see admin users table okay so let's go ahead and see the column that we're going to add the first column that we're going to add is the reference of company id so we're going to put here an integer since uh, the, the our, our our ids are integers okay so put company id okay so put integer company id so let us see also more columns that we may need to record about company users or the users okay the users or the by data of users that are not in this table okay so let's go ahead and see and look at those ones so i'm going to have here another text another thing that we're going to need there is the name of the i mean the first name and the last name first name it's going to be nullable okay means that it can be null another thing you're going to have last name 
okay we shall need the last name of a person okay another thing that is not there we shall need the phone number of a person another thing that's not there we shall need maybe an alternative phone number so when the company they are registering their employees they can add this information about their what their employees we shall need the address of a person we shall need no the peer box we shall not need it maybe we shall need the um, sex of a person or what we call gender uh -huh. we shall need what what shall we need we shall need date of birth okay date so it's going to be dob we shall need dob what else shall we need uh what else shall we need about a person <laughs> uh what shall we need i think that's enough uh for the beginning we can uh, begin with that maybe status maybe you can block someone and activate someone something like that so you can make here what you call a string okay and then maybe you put your status where well, i can say maybe someone is active or not active status and then put your maybe uh default value default is going to be active so maybe you should be able to block a user i think uh that's enough information to record about a what a person if if we add this information about a person i think this can be enough uh adding them on the other thing but the most important part that we added to add is this one the what the company uh, ID okay, so we can be able to assign a company to someone All right, let's go ahead and run this and migrate. Okay, so it has said I'll migrate So I'll open my terminal. I clear the screen and run php artisan Migrate So in run php artisan migrate you can see it is successful So if you're not successful just fix the problem. So if you come now to our structure of the table of users now you can see that this information have been added to our part, to our table of users okay so that is good now after doing that now what we're going to do we want now when we are creating here i want to do a logic that um when i'm creating a company here when i'm creating a company or when i'm updating a company okay it should get it should sit the administrator of this company it should sit the administrator of this company to belong to this company i repeat i'm going to write a logic that when i update this company or when i create this company i want this company i mean i want the system to automatically set the administrator of this company to belong to this company meaning that when you're going to create this company when you're going to update this company it should get the administrator who belong to, who of this company to automatically belong to this company to set him to be to belong to this company so that is where we're going to need what we call hooks so i'm going to create a hook that uh we will, will listen to when uh the company information is updated and it will also listen to when um when the company information is updated and it will also listen to when the company is created and when it is doing that it should automatically update uh the user okay update the user i mean update update the, the administrator to belong to that company okay let us do that so we are going to go to the company model okay so you're going to go to the company model so you come here to our application then models and then you come to company model here all right so after going to come in to company model here you're going to put what you call boot okay so those are called events others call them hooks so we're going to put here maybe boot so this is how you write the boot okay so you pause the video and see how it is written it is protected static function boot and then you put parent and then put double colons and then say boot and then after uh this boot will have a uh, different uh, uh hooks or different columns i'm going to explain these hooks for one more time so the first hook is called creating so this creating hook it is a hook that will be called automatically when this model is being created or when, when an instance of this model is being created before it is saved to the database 
this hook called creating it will be called another hook is called a uh, created so created it is a hook that will be called when a new item of this model has been created meaning that when 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 the company is created and has been which has it is it has been created it means this hook of the created will be called or an event of created will be called so this one will be created this one is for before and this one is for what is for after so this one you can be able to cancel a process this one it is like a consequence okay after something has been created what do you want to do so you can put a listener there and then do some action so those are the two hooks another hook is called updating so updating is a hook that will be called before an item of this uh, model is being is up is updated is being updated is, is before it is updated in what in the database let's say that we are changing a company name the here this hook will be created so you may put some events or some actions that you want to do when this uh, action is being uh, is being done another hook is called updated so this updated it will be called when information has been changed of this particular part of this particular model okay so when information has been finished changing changing or when information has been changed you want to do some action so you can put your listener to this updated then it will be called automatically another hook is called deleting so this deleting it is being called when something is about to be deleted let's say that you want to do some action before something is deleted so you'll have to listen to this uh, listener called up deleting another hook is called deleted so this deleted hook it will be called when when a what when an item has been deleted and you want to do some action so you need to do what uh, to listen to this deleted action so those are the six important hooks another one is called restoring another one is called restored so that one in case for yeah, those are those, those are not very important okay just in case something has been restored from the trash okay so these are the most six important hooks that we shall need in our programming life cycle when you're dealing with laravel and want to do some actions so now where do these hooks become important now i want when a company is being created when a company has been created i want to say to the user or the administrator of that company to belong to that company so it means that we're going to listen to created and updated so those are the two hooks that we need to do what to uh, to create let's say that you want to relate a logic that um, when a company has been deleted all the employees that belong to that company should be deleted you can listen to this hook of what of deleted so those hooks must be wrapped in this in either must be inside this a, a class of a model and they must be wrapped in the what they must be wrapped in this boot function that i've just shown you here okay now let's go ahead and now uh listen to created and updated okay uh so um, let's go ahead and do that uh okay so let's 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 do created first so i'm going to do created so uh let me so when you want to do created this is what you do let me delete this because it is doing what i'm supposed to do before i do it so you see when this function has been created i mean when when this act when this class has been created this is how you do what you listen to the created okay so you can as well change here by putting updating so updating means that before something happens in case you want to balance things want to change things you can put the updating so you see this will be called so you write static and then put double code and then put create and then open a bracket and then the right word function and then you open a bracket and then you put a variable that is going to receive that data and then open a curl bracket and then like this now the data or the record the data of this item that has been created it will be given to me through this variable here okay you can call it m you can call it model you can call it anything so it means now when a company has been created the data of that company it will be created it will be given to me here 
okay okay let's let us listen to updated okay updated you see now i'm going to put here and say die updated okay so this will be called when something has been updated okay now let us try to update something so i'm going to come here to our controller of company okay and then i'm going to come here to our form to our form okay and then i'm going to get our first company so i just we are just testing company and then you say equals to uh, company dot find i want to get the company which has id one dot find one so after getting this company so this is the company let me dump it here so this is the company I mean this is the company so this is the company so if i come and refresh here on top remember i'm on form on top of this form before the form starts i get just the company which has id1 and then come and refresh here you'll see i'm able to get the company data the company one so let me go ahead and get its name you see this is its name okay company one so what i'm going to do i'm going to add some letters or some random numbers to this name and then save it and then we see how the updated hook will be called so i'll come here and then put here name equals to let me just get its name and add and concatenate there uh -huh. i concatenate there some random number between one and zero okay so and then i after i save it okay so when i save it put here die and say done okay so when i save it what does it mean it means that we are going to expect this hook of update to be called so we are going to expect this update to be called our time is up let me just finish this there is even this thing okay. okay let's first test this one and then we go for a short break okay so if i come here and refresh can you see updated so updated it is here in this hook of what of uh of, of company and the beautiful thing is even the data has been given to us i can access the data or that has been updated you see i can be able to get even a company name a new company name here so it means that i can be able to get everything that has been updated through this hook okay so if i refresh you see this is the new company name so this means that we can be able to listen to something that has been updated so at this point it is where we are going to get the company owner which you can get here by company what uh company owner is called owner id right something like owner id we're going to get the owner id of this company when it has been updated and we get the owner id after getting the owner id then we set the owner id the company id of that owner to be the id of this company so that one we shall be able now to say that this user belongs to this particular company so when they log in they can start now adding their employees they can start adding their records so now i hope you have understood what is meant by hook because you're going to use the main load and the it is a technique that helps us too much in laravel so let us go for a short break of how many of 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 five minutes and then after five minutes we come back for the last session so immediately at at what time at 15 past 15 past 9 we should be back uh for the today's last session 15 past 9 so let's go ahead and have a short break 15 past 9 you should come back for our today's last session <laughs>